North American Fishing Club social media editor Greg Huff here. I'm out with Bass Pro Kevin Short. Hey guys, Kevin Short here from North American Fishing Club. We're out here on beautiful Lake Washita in my home state of Arkansas. What's the key to solving these bass? We've got about 62 degree water temperature. Yep. How do you get them dialed in down south here in the fall? We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take one of the St. Croix Mojo Bass cranksters out, a little lipless crankbait on there, and see if we can't catch us some Lake Washita bass. The fastest way to find fish is to cover water. This stretch of bank right down through here, you can kind of look down through here and you can see it's got, it's got several different points that kind of run out. It's actually got a series of four or five little points that run out. There's a lot of, a lot of structure op options here. In addition to that, I mean, if you look up, on the, uh, look up there on the bank, there's a lot. There's clay, there's gravel, there's some chunk rock, there's a mixture of different rock down there on the bottom and a lot of uh, a lot of the lakes in the in the Ozarks region and you know like here in the in the Washtals that's one of the things to kind of key on is that difference in the rock look for those areas on the bank where the rock changes where the rock changes size a lot of times you'll find fish will get bunched up in those little transition areas where the rock changes from gravel to chunk rock or maybe it could change to uh, to big uh, big slabs of rock. Any any kind of change like that is a good area to start exploring, uh, particularly with crankbait. This is an XR75 one knocker, and basically all I'm doing is just yo-yoing it across the uh, across the bottom and trying to keep it in contact with the bottom as much as possible. Throw it out there and, act, and just wait. Let it hit the bottom. I mean, that's, that's the whole key to, to fishing this stuff right here. Is it needs to contact the bottom quite frequently. The boat's sitting in, right now it's about 12 foot. We're actually coming up on the ends of one of these points. And I'm just trying to, trying to find those fish that are roaming around through all this rock looking for uh, crayfish, looking for crawdads. In between each one of these points, there's a little gut that runs up in there that's got deep water. So in addition to the point running out, in between them, you've got a little ditch that runs up in there and it gives the, uh, I mean, it gives these fish a lot of different options in a, in a, in a short span of uh, bank here. It gives them a lot of different depth options. I mean, they can be anywhere from two foot up on top of one of these points to 20 foot in one of these guts within just a few feet. And that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, somewhere down this stretch of bank, we're gonna find some fish. Got him? There you go. Is it drag loose on that thing or what? Did it come off that yeah. gummit? You smack it pretty good? Yeah. Did he smack it when it's falling? Yep. As it's falling back down, that's when they smack it. It's like the best jig bite that you've ever had. I mean, they'll just thump it real hard. It's just a, like a slack line thump. A lot of times it's, uh, I mean, it's almost like somebody cut you, I mean, just somebody just cut your line because the, the bait just, you, know, you can kind of feel the bait kind of shimmying down and then it just goes away. But I think that, you know, that kind of, that, that yo-yo in it, you know, hopping it across the bottom, that's something, it's totally unlike, you know, a crankbait that's got a bill is constantly rooting along the bottom there, you know, bumping. But when you're, when you're fishing that lipless and you're actually pumping it like that, that's a totally, you get a totally different bite and it's, and it's purely, you know, it's purely a reaction bite. Cause that thing comes, you know, it jumps up off the bottom in front of them and then falls back down. And as it's falling back down, that's when they smack it. Of course, in a situation where you've got grass to fish across, it makes it even better. Because you know, you know, you let it fall down on top of that grass and then rip it up out of it. And those fish are laying, you know, usually they're laying in little holes or pockets or laying right on top of that grass. And it's the perfect, perfect scenario. You know, you can get the same kind of bite, uh, you know, fishing around these rocks and, and stumps like this, you, you know, with the, uh, with the stumps and the rock, obviously you're gonna get hung up a little bit more, but you know when, when the fish are up on that stuff, it's, it's such a unique presentation that uh, you'll, you'll get hung up to get the bites. 
I've always liked to use a, uh, a fiberglass rod with my crankbaits, whether it's a, a lipless crankbait or a lip crankbait, because it's got it's got so much flex to it. Um, particularly, you know, with with bigger crankbaits, bigger fish. I mean that that flex that you get from fiberglass. I mean it, it's extremely forgiving, and when uh, when a fish really hammers that bait or when they just barely suck it in, that, that fiberglass, that, that slow action, it kind of delays your reaction as opposed to graphite that's extremely sensitive. Most fiberglass is uh, a little bit, you know, not quite as sensitive, so it kind of delays your reaction time and you don't immediately set the hook. You know, it's really hard for all of us, when you feel a bite, I mean, the first thing that you want to do is jerk. With fiberglass, you get a little bit of uh, forgiveness there because the material itself is a little bit duller. You don't get quite the sensitivity. Now, one of the things that uh, that I've noticed, particularly with, uh, with the St. Croix fiberglass rods, is you can counteract some of that dullness in the sensitivity by using fluorocarbon line. So that, yeah, you can feel, but even, even when you go to swing, I mean, that rod's still got a slow enough action that you're not gonna take the bait away from the fish. I've always thought that that was a problem for a lot of people when they're fishing crankbaits, particularly with the graphite rod, is they're so fast, so sensitive, that as soon as you feel the fish, it's almost like you're, you're pulling the bait away from the fish. A fiberglass rod will cut down on that tremendously. This on Washita, uh, this is the uh, the Rayburn red color, and for whatever reason, I, I mean on Washita, it is. I mean it's like legal dynamite for uh, I, pretty much. I, I'm not going to say all year, but a big chunk of the year from from now till probably. Uh, end of March, 1st of April. I mean, if, you know, if you're gonna to come to Lake Washita and throw a lipless crankbait, you really only need one color, and that's it. Now well, let's pack up and run up in that creek. It'll take us a couple of minutes to get up there. Throw the crankbaits, maybe throw the jig around on some stuff. Let's try some different things to get a bite. 